Lucifer, son of the morning. I'm gonna chase you out of earth. Chase the Devil by Max Romeo was released in 1976 on Chris Blackwell's Island Records label. Although Chase the Devil has become an essential part of any reggae collection, and is without a doubt the song Max Romeo will be remembered for, it isn't actually his biggest hit. Seven years before he put on his iron shirt, Max Romeo charted in the UK with a song called Wet Dream. The song was produced by another legendary Jamaican producer, Bunny Lee. Bunny Lee began his career aged 21 as a record plugger for Duke Reed's Treasure Isle label in 1962. By 1969 he had established himself as an engineer and producer in his own right, producing hits for the big artists of the day like Derek Morgan, Slim Smith, Stranger Cole and Roy Shirley. Along with King Tubby, Bunny Lee and his then apprentice Prince Jammy, who would later be crowned King Jammy, pioneered the reggae subgenre of dub. An instrumental version of the song that heavily used effects such as spring reverbs, tape delays and phasers. Bunny Lee was also one of the first producers to reuse instrumentals. Not just by making dub versions, he would also record entirely new songs by different vocalists over existing instrumentals. The idea was born out of necessity. It was a lot cheaper to record a new vocal over an existing track than to record one from scratch, especially as Bunny Lee didn't have his own studio in these days. This practice of recycling is how Wet Dream was made. The instrumental was originally used for Derek Morgan's Hold You Jack. Max Romeo had written the song, but hadn't intended to sing it himself. Bunny Lee offered the track to other artists he was working with, but they all turned it down. Eventually, Bunny convinced Max Romeo to sing it. I didn't like the image that it was going to portray, so I actually, you know, at the time, was a little apprehensive in doing it. And he actually said to me, look, nobody else would want to do it. Slim didn't want to do it because he's scared that singing about, you know, explicit sex would tarnish his image. Why surely is a blood and fire man from morning. He said he didn't have nothing to do with it. So I said, all right, Bunny. He said, well, look, if you don't do it, you can't stay around me, you know. I said, all right, boss, I'll do it. Okay. So that's how we end up um, doing the song. the song. Yeah, we went to studio one to record the song. That's another story. <laughs> Bunny Lee rented Cox and Dodge Studio One and took Max Romeo there to record Wet Dream. But they met with resistance from the studio's owner, who was also engineering the session. Well, we walk in the studio and Mr. Dad was the engineer and um, he sits there playing a few rhythms and then Bunny called me and he started playing the Holy Jack rhythm and said, book a vice a tune. So I went around the mic and said, every night me go to sleep we have a wet dream. He said, Dad said, no, 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 no. Bunny Lee, I will get them fool, fool out of the studio. I just record them type of thing then in my studio in a Rasta. <laughs> so Bunny said, Mr. Dad, I rent this studio from you know, Jackson. You can't tell me for, what for record. So if you don't want to deal with it, back off and we call call the printer. The printer was, at the time was Errol T. So Errol T came and balanced the studio. I proved him wrong because all the great songs that Studio One did, none of them top wet dream, 26 weeks in the British chart, sliding up and down, you know, so I proved him wrong. <laughs> the song proved to be too explicit for 1960s Britain. And after playing it just twice, the BBC decided to ban the record. Because there's the wonderful Max Romeo wet dream thing, which was uh, just such a great pop record, or that, obviously the lyrics, um, you know, you can see why they had a problem with that lie down girl, let me push it up, push it up. But I tried to explain, I said, look man, I'm not, I have nothing to do with sex, I'm talking about my house leaking here, me and my lady sleeping in bed, rain falling, the, the leak, the roof is bloody leaking. She's getting up to, 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 to plug the leak and I'm saying, lie down, girl, I'll push it up. They didn't buy that. <laughs> Despite being banned by the biggest broadcaster in the country, on the 28th of May 1969, it entered the UK charts at number 46. This meant that despite being banned from the station, the song would have to feature in the weekly chart programmes. The DJs responsible for covering the chart rundowns were instructed to not mention the song by name and simply refer to it as a record by Max Romeo. Unaffected by the BBC refusing to even say the title, the single made its way to number 10 and spent a total of six months on the charts. It sold over 250,000 copies. 
an album called A Dream was released with songs in a similar style to Wet Dream. But by his second album, Let the Power Fall in 1971, Max Romeo had ditched the slackness and was now singing more politically and socially conscious music. The title track of the album was used as a theme song for Michael Manley's PNP during the 1972 Jamaican general election. The PNP defeated the JLP, whose leader Hugh Shearer was only appointed Prime Minister following the death of the previous Prime Minister, Donald Sankster. Shearer made way for Edward Siaga to take over the JLP, and so began the bitter rivalry between Manley and Siaga that eventually led to the shooting of Bob Marley. Max Romeo's follow-up to Let the Power Fall was the album Revelation Time. This was recorded at Lee Scratch Perry's Black Art Studio. For years, Perry had used various studios around Kingston to work on recordings. But in 1973, he finally built his own facility at the back of his family home. The equipment in the studio was pretty low-end and low-spec, even for the time. The magic wasn't in the equipment he had, it was all about the way that he used it. He had a four-track tape machine when a lot of other studios were running eight or even 16 tracks, so he needed to be inventive about how he recorded and make sure he was getting the best performances out of the musicians. Revelation Time was largely produced by Max Romeo, with help from arranger Clive Hunt, but Lee Perry played a bit of percussion, handled the engineering and co-produced one track, Three Blind Mice. Max Romeo built up a good working relationship with the eccentric producer, so when it came time to make another album, he asked Perry to produce the whole record. The result was War in a Babylon, and Chase the Devil was one of the four singles released from the album. War in a Babylon is among the finest of Lee Scratch Perry's work. It's considered to be part of the Black Ark Holy Trinity, along with Junior Mervyn's Police and Thieves and Party Time by the Heptones. Despite being such an iconic release, it seems the financial rewards for his best album was not immediately forthcoming. That album was a disaster, but it's my best album to date. It was a financial disaster. It's 1976, you say? Yes. And this is 2019? Yes. I'm still waiting on the first royal statement. It wasn't until 1992 that he finally received money from Chase the Devil, but not from the label that released it. The money came from English electronic dance group, The Prodigy. Their single, Out of Space, samples the second half of the chorus of Max Romeo's song, The single sold nearly three quarters of a million copies and is probably the most successful track the group released, right up until Firestarter in 1996. In 2003, Kanye West sampled the intro of Chase the Devil for the Jay-Z track Lucifer. Countless other tracks have sampled Chase the Devil, but between The Prodigy and Jay-Z, Max Romeo has been able to buy land and build a house. Oh, look at this. It's Chase the Devil. This is from Jay-Z. This is from Prodigy. They combine, buy this land and build this house. Right, okay. This is Chase the Devil. Okay. In addition to the financial rewards, Chase the Devil has guaranteed Max Romeo a place in reggae history. Chasing the Devil means chasing the negative out of your mind and let it be con controlled by positive. Put on an iron shirt, I mean, you, you, you toughen up your spirit and get Satan out of your mind. And let's have one world with <laughs> one people, peaceful and tranquil. I mean, it sounds stupid, isn't it? <laughs> and it's it's far-fetched, but it's just a dream.